Hi, this is a short film about the work of our group of 3D printing volunteers. We're based in Epsom in the UK, and like hundreds of other similar groups around the world, we're making protective face shields for frontline medical staff. Before I get going, I'd like to say that if you or anyone you know is in the Epsom area and has a 3D printer which they could use to help us, we'd love to hear from you. There'll be contact details in the description. As I'm sure you know, the very high demand for personal protective equipment caused by the coronavirus pandemic has created a shortage of this vital equipment. And while it remains generally unavailable, we're hoping to help out medical staff who need it most. We're doing this by making face shields using three types of machine. 3D printing equipment to make parts like this, laser cutting machines to cut out the visor material, and sewing machines to make the elastic head strap. Unlike injection moulding, where plastic parts can be made in a matter of seconds, 3D printing is a very slow process, in which the material is added in tiny amounts, layer by layer, until the part is completed. Depending upon the particular machine being used, the parts for one face shield can take several hours to make, and this is why we're asking users to take care of them and where possible clean them rather than throwing them away. Some of the medical staff with these shields have found that an easy and effective way to do this is by using sterilising wipes such as Clinel Clorox wipes or universal sanitising wipes. The shields we make come in three types. This is a model designed by a team at Prusa, an American company which manufactures 3D printing equipment. It's robust and popular with medical staff. However, a critical part of this design is the visor, which is made from a material known as PET-G and is 500 microns or half a millimetre thick. In common with the rest of the country, our stocks of this material are currently very limited and added to the fact that this Prusa design takes longer to make, we may be forced to produce either of two alternative types. The first is simply the same design except with a visor made from A4 acetate sheets, the sort of thing that was used as overhead projector slides. This isn't as robust and the holes have to be specially cut by laser, but it's a sturdy fit and it's a good alternative. And finally we have the design we're calling our basic model. This is much faster to produce and also uses an acetate sheet. The advantage with this one being that the holes can be made with a standard A4 four-hole punch. So even though the thinner acetate might get broken, the user can easily replace it. Once they are manufactured, the shields are assembled, packed up into boxes and delivered to local hospitals and medical centres. I'd like to close by saying thanks to the many supporters we've had during this emergency. People have kindly donated both materials and the money we need to buy them. And if you'd like to help, please go to this GoFundMe page. Thank you.